The fact that people or institutions have a right to do something doesn't imply that they should do it. <gasps> a legal right is not sufficient to make an act ethically justified. Take, for example, the case of Snyder versus Phelps. Members of the Westboro Baptist Church protested the funeral of U.S. Marine Matthew Snyder, who was killed in Iraq. Church members picketed the funeral, denouncing both the deceased and his father, Albert Snyder, for raising his child Catholic. Snyder sued the church for defamation, invasion of privacy, and emotional distress. Westboro Baptists claimed that they were invoking their right to free speech and had followed all local ordinances for picketing. <laughs> now, initially, Snyder was awarded millions in damages, <clears throat> but the Supreme Court eventually overturned the case and ruled in favor of Westboro Baptist hey. on the grounds that free speech is protected under the First Amendment. In the lone dissenting opinion, Supreme Court Justice Alito wrote, in order to have a society in which public issues can be openly and vigorously debated, it is not necessary to allow the brutalization of innocent victims. <coughs> so, when ethics and law conflict, what do we do? I personally believe pro-life is the right choice for everyone because I support life. And if I'm somewhere where I shouldn't be, protesting, for example, on a Planned Parenthood or an abortion clinic, People that go there should know ethically that's how I, I think and that maybe I can change their mind or help them rethink what they're doing. While you are exercising your freedom of speech or whatever it may be, you are um, following the law, but you're not following, I guess, in my mind, like a societal law, which is respect for everybody that is in the community along with you. Consider also the story published by ESPN-affiliated website, Brantland. Written by Caleb Hannon, the story describes the invention of a new style of putter. The golf club was claimed to be extraordinarily accurate because it took advantage of what the inventor called the physics of golf. And many experts agreed that it struck the ball in a revolutionary way, helping golfers' accuracy. As Hannon investigated the story, he made what he considered to be a dramatic discovery. The inventor, Dr. V, was a transgender woman. Hannon also discovered that Dr. V had made false claims about her education and work experience. He reasonably included this information in the story. Readers judge the credibility of a scientist based on academic degrees and previous successes. Mm -hmm. They had a right to know if the scientist's claims about the physics behind the putter were true or not. As a journalist, Hannon's duty was to seek out the truth and provide a fair and comprehensive account of the story. From Hannon's perspective, Dr. V's undisclosed gender identity was intertwined with her fabricated academic and career history. Hmm. In the end, the invention of the putter became a backdrop to his story, which Hannon framed around what he saw as Dr. V's life of deception. On the other hand, Dr. V had been adamant about maintaining her privacy from the start and did not want the story published. Sorry. A few months before publication, Dr. V committed suicide. Both the writer and the website had the legal right to publish what they did. Neither Hannon nor Grantland is legally responsible for Dr. V's decision to end her life over the publication. But having the legal right to do something is not the same as fulfilling one's ethical responsibility as a professional. Mm -hmm. Something can be legal and be ethical, but also be unethical. Gratland acknowledged the difficulty their editors faced in deciding whether or not to publish the article, and the website has apologized for not consulting with members of the trans community before the story was published. Just because the law allows you to do something doesn't mean it's the ethical thing to do. 
When I was an undergrad, I worked at this lab where I was working on a very highly sophisticated study, um, and, and then I was also in charge of the data, and I, I realized that I made a mistake with something that, how I entered the data, I just missed a lot of information that it was going to take me weeks and weeks to, to put back together, and I was approaching the deadline. So I had these two sides pulling at me on one end. I wanted to meet that deadline regardless of the mistakes that I had made, but at the other end, I, you know, I wanted to keep the integrity of the data and make sure that everything was as it was meant to be. The law sets out what people are free to do, regardless of the effect that those actions have on others. Hmm. Ethics describes what people should do, taking their responsibilities and the predictable consequences of their actions into account. In most cases, it's clear, ethics demands more than the law. There are a lot of things I don't agree with in the, the legal system because of how unethical it may be. Such as, for example, just, uh, or a death row. Um, choosing to do an airstrike, which is relatively indiscriminate, you know, um, on the, as far as the targets are concerned. You know, there are a lot of things that we can see on paper and say, oh, you, you can legally do that, you can. Um, but I think when we're looking at that, you know, on paper sense, it distances us from individuals.